This is where we stopped in the previous video. We found out the MRTS for the clothing and the food production. Now in this video, let's see how this relates to the fact that we have a limited amount of capital and labor. Namely, we have 100 units of labor, 400 units of capital in the entire economy for the production of clothing and food. So let's take that into account over here. 100 units of labor, 400 units of capital. Actually, no more space there. Let's go below. Uh, yeah, let me just write it in the corner to not forget the data. So the labor in total is 100 units, meaning the labor employed in food plus the labor employed in clothing must add up to 100 and the capital employed in food plus the capital employed in clothing must add up to 400. Now we know that we want the equilibrium, we want the contract curve and on the contract curve we know that there is this relationship that the MRTSs must be equal. So the MRTS in clothing production must equal to the MRTS in food production. Now what does that mean? Let's write it let's write it here below. The capit the ratio of capital to labor in clothing production, so this is the MRTS of clothing. The capital relative to the labor must equal to the MRTS in food production, which is also the capital in food production relative to the labor in food production. Capital in food production relative to labor in food production. Now, with this in mind, we could actually go one step further because we can write the relationship between capital of food and capital of clothing. Why? Because we have it over here as an equation. So again, no more space there, so I'm going to write here below. Since we have, since we have the uh, labor, uh, one second. Yes, so let's write the relationship between the capital of food, capital of clothing, and also labor of food and labor of clothing. In other words, if we want to write this one, capital of food in terms of capital of clothing, what's that going to be? Capital of food is equal to 400 minus the capital of clothing. 400 minus the capital of clothing. And the same logic goes for the labor. If we want to write the labor in food as a relationship of labor in clothing, that would be 100 minus the labor in clothing. 100 minus the labor in clothing. Now with this in mind, let's input them in the equation and see what we get. So we would have the following. We would have uh, capital of clothing relative to labor of clothing equals to 400 minus capital of clothing divided by 100 minus labor of clothing. Now let's, let's, do, a, let's do a cross product. Uh, let's do a cross product over here. If we do a cross product, what do we have? Uh, like that we would have the following K clothing times 100 minus labor of clothing equals to labor of clothing times 400 minus capital of clothing. Now if you open the brackets, what do we have now? We would have the following. We would have 100 times the capital of clothing minus the capital of clothing times the labor of clothing equals to 400 labor of clothing minus labor of clothing times capital of clothing. What do we see in this equation? We can see a common term which we can cancel. This one minus capital of clothing times labor of clothing and same goes here. So we cancel that out and we're left with 100 KC equals to 400 LC. Now we can divide this by 100 each. So this and this cancels out meaning that the capital of clothing equals to four times the labor of clothing. And we found the relationship between capital and labor in terms of the clothing production. And that's going to give us our contract curve. This is going to give us our contract curve. Now, this is our contract curve, but we still have one more question to find out the production possibilities frontier, which has a relationship with the contract curve. That's part of the question derive also the production possibilities frontier and we will do so in the next video.